If you stick with it long enough, there will come a time in running your professional organizing business where you may need to shake things up a little bit. You could get burnt out or bored or just feel the need to refine your niche. You could also get sick, you could get injured, you may need to move. The bottom line is that life is just gonna continue happening around you. And as entrepreneurs, it is a constant game of figuring out how to pivot, tweak, and ultimately improve our businesses. My guest today went from having a six-figure organizing company with nine employees to giving all of that up to work remotely with her clients through her organizing courses and programs so that she could live half the year in sunny Florida on the beach and the other half of the year in her native Ottawa, Canada. So she's gonna be sharing a few secrets with us today if you're interested in learning how to create your own courses and programs for your organizing business. So I encourage you to stick around and let's get into it. Hey fam, welcome to the Speak Organize podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, decluttering expert, and ADHD organizing specialist. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. Do me a favor, fam, go ahead and grab that device and look at the screen and tap the subscribe button, and that will make you an official member of the speaker fam, which would be my honor to have you on board. If you're an Apple podcast user, you can go ahead and leave us a rave review. We would so appreciate it. And if you're watching today's video on YouTube, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up and tap that notification bell so that you're notified every time I post new content. You have the opportunity to schedule an affordable consultation with me to get all of your questions answered for real nothing is off the table. And I would be honored to strategize with you and provide you with tons of resources during our call. I am serious about my mission to help you successfully start your own business and help you overcome any fear or doubt you have in your ability to make home organizing your new career. It was the best thing I ever did, and I would love to help you do it too. My schedule fills up quickly, so be sure to click the link in the description or the pinned comment to book your call before all of my slots are full for the month. And if you're ready to get paying clients in the door faster, you're gonna need a streamlined process to onboard your prospects. And I have taken all the guesswork out of doing that. What to ask potential clients during consultations, what to put in your agreements, getting customer reviews, and more with my signature Pro Organizer Forms Pack. These are nine done for you forms that are customizable in a free Canva account. And I'll even show you how to set up that account if you've never used Canva before. These forms will save you days, possibly weeks worth of work researching and drafting critical documents to run your business professionally. And they're specifically designed for our industry. All of my YouTube and podcast fam get an exclusive discount, YT Pro 8, and that will get you $8 off at checkout. Lastly, if you are totally intimidated by using social media for your business, I have a great class that you can watch on your own time called the I Speak Organized Social Media Method. It includes five 20 to 30 minute lessons that will help you come up with endless post ideas for the most popular platforms, including easy reels and TikTok video ideas, how to boost your following and engagement with people who actually like and share your content, how to post consistently without spending hours on social every day with my signature content planner that you'll receive for free at the end of class and a breakdown of all my favorite tools and software. I've made it super accessible and affordable for you. And of course, you get a bonus discount for being part of my speaker fam, ISO Social 5 at checkout. All right, speaker fam, welcome. Join me in welcoming my wonderful guest. This is Kathy McEwen. She is a decluttering and organizing expert working mostly virtually with clients in Ottawa. And I want to welcome you, Kathy, and dive right in to our convo. How you doing? Good. Thanks. And thanks for having me on. Likewise. Yeah, it's good to see you today. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the background of your business, because I know that it looks a little bit different now than it used to. So um, tell us a little bit about your background, what you were doing before you started organizing, and then what your business now looks like today. Okay. So prior to having a home organizing business, I actually worked in the government. So I had a government job and quit my full-time job 
to take a chance at doing a home organizing company, which my mom says was a huge risk, which she's right. She's right. But I did take that gamble and left the government to do it. And I'm so glad I did. So then what I did is I spent um, nine years working in the field, going into people's homes. We helped with home organizing. We also helped with a lot of people who were moving. So we included packing and unpacking services as well in our business. And I'd say within a year or so of me doing it, I brought on my first team member. Mm -hmm. Uh, It wasn't too, too long. I realized pretty quickly that having more sets of hands definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So then I grew it to a team of, I think the highest I had at one time was nine people uh, working for me. And then, um, and then one day, because as you know, as most people know, it's quite physical doing Indeed. organizing, right? Mm-hmm. It's very, very physical. And um, I just woke up one day and said, you know what? I would love to help more people than who I am just in our local community. I didn't want to do a franchise. I didn't want to you know, do anything like that. But I wanted to reach more people. And I also kind of wanted to spend some time on the beach. And that is why I went virtual. And now I'm continuing to help people get their homes decluttered and organized. But I do it through coaching calls and programs, courses, et cetera. And half my time, I live in Florida. And the other half, I live in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Oh, very cool. Okay. So was there anything else that happened other than just this revelation one day you woke up and you decided that you wanted to make the transition, but what did that transition away from in-person organizing look like? Was it a difficult transition for you to figure out how to integrate virtual organizing your business or what did that look like? Well, I actually started doing virtual and creating courses while I was still working full-time doing helping people in the homes. I started to do that on the side thinking that one day I may want to do this full-time. And so that's why, and To be honest with you, I had a little bit of health conditions that also prevented me from doing some of the heavy lifting. I had a heart issue, which I wasn't expecting at all. It kind of just came out of the nowhere. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'll have to say, though, most of the time I wasn't on the jobs anyways. A lot of times my staff were like when it came to decluttering, they were trained so well. They were so helpful to our clients. I didn't need to go to every single job. Mm-hmm. But there was some that I just really couldn't get away from. I wanted to be there. Mm-hmm. And um, and then it just got to the point where I got, I kind of got physically tired and yeah. said, you know what, it's been almost 10 years and I really like the beach. And so mm-hmm. that's kind of where I, I went from there. Yeah. And it was, it was heart wrenching. I have to admit like, when I did let it go, I cried. I cried with my staff. I, it was like my baby that I had built and worked so hard for Mm -hmm. to, to not have that and missing those local clients. It was tough at first and I still miss them and I still talk to some of them today. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I, you, you do build such a bond with your clients in this business. It's really a unique industry that way because they're allowing you into their homes, their personal spaces, uncovering a lot of, uh, uncomfortable moments and guilt and, And all the things that go along with the decluttering process in particular, it can be very difficult for people. So um, it it does build those sort of lifelong bonds. But uh, there are a lot of people that uh, may be in remote areas that can't receive the physical help, or they might not have the means to do so, or they may just not be emotionally ready. And so you've transitioned to help out a larger audience essentially. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like. So what does a typical work day look like for you these days? Well, I usually book most of my calls in the morning. I'm, I work best in the morning. So I usually get up early and by between eight and 12, I am usually doing most of my work prep work and working with clients on calls. Mm -hmm. And then the afternoon, I usually take a little bit of a break um, I try to have a, a little bit of a life balance now. So I do take a bit of a break because I am a workaholic, right? At least I was. And so for me, I went from working day and night to saying, you know what, slow down. It's time to slow down and have a balance. 
So I do try to have that balance now where I can still help people, um, but also help myself as well by having a bit of a break in the afternoon. So that's what yeah. I do. Awesome. Yeah. Are you currently back up in Canada for the season or are you still in Florida? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm back here now. Yeah. That's back awesome. here now, which is, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice time of year. I suppose it's, it's warm and summer like. Yeah. So it is warm today. It's been actually pretty cool for this season I found, but today is a beautiful day awesome. and yesterday was beautiful as well. So it's nice to enjoy when you get home to Canada, that it's actually warm. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I lived in the Midwest in the U.S. and Minneapolis for about 16 years. So ah. real close neighbors. And it was just, uh, it was the summer days, the warmth was so few and far between. So we just soaked up every possible little ounce that we could in those times. Yeah. So I, I totally understand and can appreciate where you're coming from. And that's why I moved to the Pacific Northwest where we have like pretty mild weather all year round aside from the rain. So anyway, that is neither here nor there. So I want to, I want to learn a little bit more about, cause I do talk a fair bit about virtual organizing on my channel and there's various different ways you can go about it. And, um, I've talked a lot about helping clients one-on-one, -on -one, but I know that you also offer, uh, coaching community and some courses and things like that. That's something that I haven't really explored with my audience on the channel. So I do want to kind of dive into that a little bit because it is a possibility. It's not an easy thing to do because I do that as well. Um, but it is something that if you can, if you can figure it out and crack the code about what people actually need, it can be very beneficial for you and also for your wallet and various other things. So what exactly is it that you love about remote organizing and the coursework and all of that versus the in-person? And what do you think are some of the additional benefits that you can offer to your clients that you can't offer with in-person services? So some of the benefits are that um, if they buy a course for me or they join one of our programs, they have access to all that information and can go back and review it at any time. Mm -hmm. When I was working in person with clients, a lot of times we were definitely teaching them the steps on how to get organized, but then we would go away and then sometimes they would backslide and then we would come back sometimes and help them again. And I think that it really helps when they can just go back and onto the modules and go over some of the things or some of the videos that we've created and that they can go back and learn them once again. It's like they're not going to lose that. They're going to keep that information forever. So I find that's a definite benefit. Also, the cost is always so much better. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to really help them learn all the steps of maintaining their home as well so that they don't necessarily need to hire somebody to come in. Um, now, having said that, there's some people that absolutely love having us come in. And, you know, I remember going in and sometimes they would go to the spa and I would be organizing their home while they're at the spa. And that's wonderful. That really is wonderful. But for the ones who really need that help that haven't learned the skills, uh, I find that it was they need a little bit more than just going in and helping them. I find right? they need that additional support. Right. Do you feel like the types of clients that you work with now are different than yes. your in-home organizing clients? You're attracting a different type of client? Absolutely. So I do have some um, that are actually, you know, we went to their homes and helped them get organized. And then years later, they joined my programs. Mm -hmm. um, I have a 84 year old lady that's in our program right now that she was 70, I think when we 70 something when we first started working with her. And it's not that she has never learned how to do it in the last 10 years per se. Mm -hmm. It's just that she just likes that extra support in the community. So, you know, she really enjoys being part of it with us. So definitely it's a definitely a different crowd in the sense that the ones who wanted us to come in and do the work for them, mm -hmm. they're not the ones that are going to take a course. You know, they're right. going to hire somebody to come in and do it. So I had both clients like that. I had clients that really needed the help and I had clients that, needed the help because they were busy, but they knew how to do it. They just didn't have the time or want to do it. They wanted somebody else to do it for them. So, Right, right. And I think that's an important distinction that I wanted to point out because if you are going into the course creation or program creation 
and you're trying to speak to your current clients, those of whom don't actually have any interest in maintaining their own spaces. They they just like somebody else to come in and do that for them. That is part of their process of keeping their home maintained and, and this and that. Um, you have to know really who you're talking to in order to be successful because they are two very different groups of people. And it just took me a very long time, like longer than it should have to figure that out and reframe like who I was speaking to, to attract the person that I could actually then help in a virtual setting. Cause it is it otherwise both people are very frustrated with the process. Right. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I find for the ones who normally would hire somebody to come in and they don't need to learn the skills, they want somebody else to do it. If they were to buy a course, it would probably be more on organizing products that they could to, could get or, you know, more of the interior de- decor or design side of it. Whereas the other ones, the other clients who really, really need help with organizing because they haven't learned the skills and they're living in a lot of clutter, they don't care about that so much. They just really want to have a functional home that they love. Right. So yeah, it's two different clientele. Totally. Yeah. I love that. I love that distinction too. I think that points out the the differences pretty clearly as well. So I'm glad you touched on that too. So within your modules in a program, what are some of the additional services that you're providing to these clients? So what type of information are you able to provide them in that virtual setting that they can't get in person? Well, because I don't just sell the courses and then it's all DIY, they do it themselves. And, you know, some people are fine with that and they're good. Other people want a little bit extra support. Mm -hmm. So we have a Facebook group for support. Mm -hmm. But I also do weekly group coaching calls with Mm -hmm. the people who buy the program as well so that they can hop on at any time um, and get support. We do have accountability on Mm -hmm. our calls as well for those who want it. So, you know, they do check in every week and we ask how it goes. We have sometimes they, because we're on Zoom, they'll turn around and show us a cupboard that got done or, you know, something that they worked on that they accomplished and they're so proud of and they'll show it to us. So it's, and then I'm there to support as well uh, by providing tips as well and helping them. So it's not like as if you have to be alone. There Mm -hmm. are some courses that are like that, definitely, but ours, there's way more to it than that. And I also throw out every now and then that I'll do, and I don't do it very often. I, um, but I'll do a one-on-one private coaching call with them as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's tailored towards their goals. But if they're on the coaching calls, I usually can try to help them as well, for sure. Yeah. And I find, and you can you can expand on this or correct me if I'm wrong. I find that having that face-to-face time inside of a program is so beneficial. I think that the, the plug and play sort of just like information dump when you hand that over to people can be really overwhelming and you yeah. miss out on that connection. Um, And maybe those little aha moments that can be provided with back and forth conversation with a real person or, or the person that you're, you're buying from, I feel like, um, do you get the, the sense that it sort of enriches the process and it is the reason why your, your clients are coming to you? Yeah, I do. And I find that the ones who go on the calls and get that additional support are the ones that often get the results fastest. Mm -hmm. Um, The ones who don't, I find they they're missing out. They really are missing out because, you know, it's not only what they're learning from me, but we're learning from each other. Mm Because sometimes, you know, the other members will bring up some points that are really relevant. And I may not have even thought of that. So we are really there to support each other and um, learn from each other. So I do find that it's really important to have that extra piece. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So um, just to kind of expand, I know we could talk, we could talk about this for hours, all the different components of courses and programs, but um, it is my understanding that you have a a few different things that you offer and you and I both know, um, and I always like to reiterate that decluttering and organizing are two very different things. They're independent of each other, but they're also dependent on each other for success. So um, can you, do you have courses that sort of more talk about decluttering, one more for organizing, something that integrates both? Or what does that look like? So what kind of things do you talk about and offer within a course? So that that's a really good point. And it's a good question. And the program I have uh, right now 
has everything. Mm -hmm. So it has modules on um, everything from the decluttering and how to let go, because that's often difficult for people, to the step-by-step process of actually getting an area decluttered and organized. And then there's a section in the organizing side of it as well, where I'll suggest products. And it also includes how to maintain with checklists on how to maintain the organization. So this program really has everything that you need. Um, and then having, and it's also done by rooms. So it's by rooms, which mm-hmm. helps uh, a lot of times helps it with the steps. Mm. And um, I'm working on smaller mini courses right now, actually, as we speak. Mm-hmm. And so they may be broken down into more of just the decluttering side or, um, you know, motivation, productivity, because all of that's really important as well. So yeah, there'll be different courses coming through as well. Very cool. Yeah, we can't wait to keep us posted on all of that good stuff. So I am I know that when I started my in-person organizing business, I I think, you know, maybe you experienced similar frustrations with not being able to help your clients maintain their space. And so for me, the the obvious next step was to do exactly what you're doing and start to create courses and programs for additional resources and support for people. And so I imagine that people listening and watching this episode today may also feel that way. Maybe they're encountering the same frustrations that you and I had and the same desire to want to do more and really set our clients up for success. So for those people watching and listening, I want you to give us three pieces of advice for anybody interested in potentially offering their own courses or programs for their business. Okay. So the very first one I would recommend is you do market research because you can just develop a course and think everybody's going to want it and, and then find out that's not really what people want. Even though I was working in the business for almost 10 years, I kind of knew what would help them mm-hmm. doing the market research was really good for me because I learned um, like I was going to do the Facebook group, right? Where you have that extra support. Well, I've learned that at least half my clients aren't even on Facebook, Mm. which I didn't realize because it's not something we ask when we go into their homes, right? So, you know, you learn a lot by doing market research. So I recommend what I did is I just posted in my email list and on Facebook, I said, I'm looking for, you know, 10 people who want to hop on a call with me while I can ask some questions. And in return, you get a $10 Starbucks card or something. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I had so many people reach out that I couldn't actually go on all the calls. I had so many people. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised. I didn't think I'd get that many people that would willing to do that for me. Mm -hmm. So that's the first one. The second one is um, try start selling it and promoting it before you even start doing the program. Mm -hmm. Because that's another thing which will help with the market research. But you know, do beta, beta t- testing where, you know, you just start it off, do a couple of modules, have people join in at a discounted rate saying that, you know, it's because you want their feedback as you're going through the program. Mm-hmm. So definitely that's really important as well um, because you don't want to create this. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You don't want to create it all and then find out that it's not going to sell. <laughs> right. What you want. Right. So that's really, really important. And if I had to say a third one, um, the third one would be give yourself more time than you think it's going to take mm-hmm. because it is actually a lot of work to create a, a program. Uh, if it's a mini course, you know, that's not so bad. But if it's something that's really in depth, like the one that I did, then um, be prepared to have long hours working on it for sure. Yeah. And, and learn the tech and figure out which platform you want to host it on and how to film the videos and what resources you're going to be creating for them to download and all the different things. It It is so much work. And one of my very first programs that I created, I didn't have this podcast episode to listen to. And I did all of the course creation before I actually started selling it. And it's, it's an interesting thing that most people don't think about. I think that was a great point that you made to start selling it before you've even created it. And people are like, what sell something that doesn't exist. And it's like, yeah, cause you want to, you want to make sure that uh, you're developing it with your target audience and serving them the things that they actually need and want primarily to solve those issues, because otherwise you're going to be doing all that work in vain. And that's exactly what I did. And it was like, 
you know, two months worth of work for this program that nobody bought. So, oh. um, and you know, we all go through those, those yeah, moments. Live and learn. Yeah. You live and learn. That's right. But hopefully they'll listen to this episode first and take your advice and dodge that bullet. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a big one for sure. Um, all right, cool. Well, is there anything else, anything that you feel like people should avoid doing in that process? Um, I would suggest avoid making it really complicated because mm -hmm. I think that's my personality. I have that A type personality where I want everything just right. So the videos, you know, at first I was doing 10 takes because they weren't perfect. And then I realized it doesn't have to be perfect. That I think is the biggest thing that you have to is a challenge that, you know, do what you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I think that's a great note to end on. So just to make sure that we're able to find all your information, connect with you in case anybody here is listening or watching and wants to join one of your programs or is curious to speak with you about it. How can we get in touch with you and uh, what are the names of your courses? So the easiest way to get a hold of me is probably through my website at kathymcewan.com. And that's Kathy, K-T-H-Y-M-C-E-W-A-N.com. And, uh, <laughs> and you can also get me on Instagram at Kathy Organizes or on Facebook. I do have a Facebook group called Organize and Declutter for Success. So you can definitely reach me there as well. And the programs that I have, I have a paper organization course. I have a one, the main big one, which is amazing, is called Calm the Clutter. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have a, three, a master class that's free. It's called uh, Three Important Steps to Decluttering and Organizing Your Home. And it's free. So, but it's a quite in depth uh, master class where you will learn a lot. Cool. Yeah. I'll make sure that we have links to all of that stuff down in the description of the video and the show notes of the podcast. And uh, as a thank you. So Kathy, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. All right, fam, as always, that wraps it up. Thank you for sticking around. And I hope that you got tons of value out of today's episode. Be sure to check out all of the show notes for the podcast or in the description of the YouTube video. If you want to get in touch with me or with Kathy, book a coaching call, join my free Facebook group get in on some of that camaraderie with others who are going through the exact same journey and struggles that you are. We are here to support you. I would love nothing more than to have you on board for all that good stuff. And beyond that, I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.